I am Dr. Ritankur Borkotoki. I am a cardiologist uh, working in Narayana Super Specialty Hospital, Guwahati. Uh, today, we will be discussing uh, two important topics of cardiology and heart diseases. Uh, very briefly and very briefly, I would highlight the important points which uh, all of us should know so that we can prevent the important side effects of these uh, diseases. So, first, I would be like to I would like to discuss coronary artery disease and heart failure. Second topic that I would uh, like to discuss is obstructive sleep apnea. It is quite a new term probably for all of you. Uh, let us come to the first topic. One is the coronary artery disease and heart failure. So, coronary artery disease as all of us know, uh, commonly we know it as heart attack. So, heart attack, uh, this term is quite uh, familiar to all of us. So, uh, what happened during heart attack? So, in heart attack, uh, one of the arteries which supplies the heart muscle this artery gets clogged with uh, the clot formation inside the artery and that causes the cessation of blood flow to the muscle of the heart distal to that blockage or uh, away from that blockage there is no blood flow to the heart muscle that causes the damage to the heart muscle. Cessation of blood flow causes heart damage and that itself causes the chest pain that usually typically we found in heart attack patients and there are many complications that usually occurs in patients of heart attack. The most common complication and which is the most dreadful complication in patients of heart attack is rhythm disorders. Rhythm disorders means because there is a damage in the muscle of the heart, sometimes the electrical current in the uh, that is the present in the heart becomes chaotic that can cause a very rapid heart rate or a very slow heart rate in a patient of heart attack that can cause the sudden cardiac death in patients of heart attack. So, sometimes we see that patients does not uh, reach hospital from home and uh, even the, the transport time of 1 hour, 2 hour is also becomes very critical. So, uh, this is a very important complication. So, now another important complication of heart attack is if the patient does not get treatment uh, in timely manner or proper treatment, patient does not get proper treatment then over a time his heart muscle muscle gets completely affected and those affected damaged heart muscle over a time fails to pump in uh, proper blood into his uh, circulation that causes the symptoms of heart failure or that causes symptoms of breathlessness. So, symptoms of heart attack ultimately uh, if it is not properly treated this can go into the symptoms of heart failure. So, diagnosing a patient with heart attack or coronary artery disease is very important. Any patient who is having a frequent chest pain particularly on minimal exertion or while doing household activities patient feel pain or there is a history of pain which is frequently increasing over a period of one month or two months, patient should immediately get a, a cardiology opinion regarding his uh, disease status. And another important symptom is breathlessness. If the patient becomes very fatigued or very breathless while walking or doing a minimal household activities, that also may be may point towards the symptoms of heart attack also, particularly in diabetic patients. Sometimes these patients can again present with a in a different manner, like patient suddenly lost consciousness and patient suddenly fell down, and after that patient uh, becomes breathless or having a such slight heaviness over chest. So, these are multiple symptoms which uh, variable kind of symptoms can be there in heart attack patients. So, all these patients require emergency medicine as well as emergency monitoring and treatment. Nowadays in heart attack patients we frequently open up the blocked artery by a procedure called primary angioplasty where we um, immediately the patient comes to our emergency we diagnose the patient as having a heart attack, then we do not shift the patient to our ICU or any ward. We directly uh, prepare the patient in the emergency and directly take him to the cat lab or catheterization lab where we do a angiography by so that we can visualize the blocked artery of the heart and we immediately open up that artery with the procedure called angioplasty where we insert a thin wire across the block, open it, open that block with the help of balloon and ultimately we put a stent, stent is a mesh, uh, it is a uh, wired kind of a mesh uh, made of stainless steel or cobalt chromium and that expands the blockage and thus the blood flow of the heart muscle is restored and that procedure can be done very uh, quickly within a half an hour time or 45 minutes and so that the muscle minimum damage to the muscle uh, occurs. So, uh, this is the uh, survival rate following a primary angioplasty is very good compared to the medicine. There are many multiple trials have all over the world proved 
its efficiency or its effective uh, effectiveness over the medicine so in that case uh, if the patient can get this kind of advanced treatment it is very uh, useful for the patient for his uh, future because this uh, muscle damage if we can contain that muscle damage of the heart attack these patients on long term follow up they do very well they do not develop the symptoms of heart failure as we have already discussed because the number of amount of uh, muscle damage is uh, contained another second important point that i want to discuss which is very less discussed topic is a new term called obstructive sleep apnea syndrome OFA so you must have seen that there are many people uh, who while sleeping they snore a lot at night they means uh, everyone who used to laugh that okay that person while he is sleeping no one can sleep in that same room because there is a loud snoring that occurs once the person falls asleep this is a common phenomena we have seen many 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 patients many uh, many of our relatives also or many of our uh, close ones so uh, what is that phenomena so whenever there is excessive snoring excessive snoring at night while sleeping usually occurs because whenever a person sleeps because of the lack of tone of the neck muscles the uh, airway passes uh, through which we breathe in uh, during sleep uh, that gets blocked that causes the vibration and that causes that sound of snoring what is the uh, medical uh, you know uh, effect of that snoring that snoring is previously it was thought to be a very benign thing that it, it is not going to be harmful to the body but nowadays it has been found that in few patients who are obese who are hypertensive and those patients uh, if there is a very frequent snoring that can give rise to symptoms of hypertension that can give rise to symptoms of coronary artery disease that can give rise to you know symptoms of stroke so identifying the patients of obstructive sleep apnea is very important so how to diagnose that patient might be suffering from obstructive sleep apnea if a person who is obese or maybe not very obese but having very frequent snoring at night excessive daytime sleepiness the person doesn't feel fresh while patient wakes up in the morning he doesn't feel very fresh during the daytime also he always feels very sleepy sometimes even if he is sitting in his chair in the office he fell asleep so uh, so these are the symptoms particularly fatigue fatigability person always feel very fatigue uh, very less energetic very sleepy during the daytime and if we ask in if we see that these kind of symptoms are there we frequently ask his sleeping habits if we see that very frequent snoring at night is present then we should suspect that patient might be suffering from obstructive sleep apnea syndrome in that case uh, we, we we usually diagnose these patients with a study called sleep study where we monitor his uh, breathing pattern we monitor his uh, oxygen saturation in his body respiratory rate his blood pressure pulse rate everything while patient sleeps and we diagnose that how many how many times his sleep gets disturbed due to this story so this uh, this topic as i wanted to share with you because uh, many of patients we see that the patient comes to us with a very symptoms of fatigability breathlessness less energetic during day time and patient is simultaneously having diabetes blood pressure so these patients if we uh, miss this diagnosis of obstructive apnea sleep apnea syndrome these patients ultimately go on to develop coronary artery disease and stroke in their later part of their life so identifying obstructive sleep apnea syndrome and by giving proper treatment we can uh, prevent these patients uh, uh, from uh, you know getting serious disorders like heart attack and stroke so uh, with this i conclude my talk uh, hope uh, i could uh, benefit uh, some of you with my uh, this uh, information thank you